Hey everybody, welcome back to All Things Johnny. Thanks for joining me. Got a great episode for you today. I am finally going to start on the ballast box. I know, I know, it's a crazy thought. From start to finish, come hell or high water, I'm going to finish this ballast box. Before we get started, like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification if you like what we're doing so that you know when I'm uploading new content. I'm trying to put something out every week or every few days. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. The ballast box, we talked about it in the first episode where I mentioned that in and of itself, the ballast box is absolutely doing its job. Makes the tractor totally safe to pick things up. I figure, although I haven't weighed it officially, it's somewhere around 500 pounds. It's just full of concrete and brick. Uh, but it does a great job and it makes the tractor really stable when lifting loads. Check, it's a ballast box, it works. But what I wanna do is I wanna make a work box out of it. So I wanna be able to have my chainsaw, shovel, ax, chains and rigging, uh, a little toolbox for my file set, all of those different things to be able to be mounted to the box so that I can pick up the box with my three-point hitch, disappear into the woods and do my trail maintenance and my bridge building, all of that stuff without having to run back and forth because I'm forgetting tools. We need a place for the gas can, for the chain bar oil, all of those different things. So let's get started on this. We're gonna start with the chainsaw because I think that the chainsaw is probably the most important thing to get right on this ballast box. I've got an MS250. It works wonderful for what I use it for as a homeowner that does some homesteading work, falling trees. My neighbor has taken down monster trees with this thing. I've taken down the trees that I'm comfortable with so far. I'm just getting used to doing this type of work. And I think that this saw is a beautiful saw. It's a still MS250. It, 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 it's wonderful. So if you're looking to get into chainsawing, I recommend you start with this saw. What a wonderful saw. You'll notice too that it's sitting in this clamp. This clamp is actually a coal pin. I picked it up at Princess Auto. It's a coal pin uh, chainsaw mount that you can put on a tractor, you can put it on a four wheeler. For the last year, it's been on my four wheeler and it works great. The one thing is, I'm not sure if you're supposed to use these with the chain guards on them, uh, but I do because what's cool about it is, is that while it's mounted to the bike or it's usually mounted this way, right? Sitting like that. Uh, the cool thing about this is, is that when you're on the bike and you're gonna go cut something, you literally pull the saw right out of the guard and the guard stays, the guard stays on the stand. And you go do your cutting and everything's honky-dory and you put this right back in here and you're off to the races. I like that. So I'm not sure if you're supposed to use it with that, but it works for me. This is gonna be the first thing that we mount to the ballast box. After we pick a really good location, to make sure we don't snag it on trees when we're turning or whatever through the woods and snap the saw right off of there. That would be a real bummer and I just don't wanna do it. I love this saw. The other thing too that I wanna take into consideration is that eventually I will graduate into a bigger saw. And so I wanna be able to handle bigger bar lengths and I wanna make sure that I'm mounting it in a place that will allow that, to will be able to accommodate that. So we're gonna get started at that. But before we do, we've got a problem in the shop. The bike is still on the stand. I'm waiting for parts for it. Until those are in, we're gonna do some work behind it. The welder's on this side of the garage anyway, and so we'll be able to fit. But I don't have enough lighting overhead, and it's driving me nuts. I've got a few more ballasts. We're gonna start by putting a few more lights up above our heads so we can see what we're doing while we're building this thing. Uh, that's the most important part to start with. So let's get started. I think the first order of business is finding the 14-2 wire and I have no idea where it is. So let's get on that. Where the heck did I put that stuff now? Okay, so we're just here back at the bench and I have found some of the LED light bars that uh, I kind of had up, tucked away in storage. These are great. You know, if you're thinking about updating the lighting in your shop, I, I, seriously, look no further. These are just fantastic lights. Um, I don't think it's worth me mentioning what the name brand of these particular lights are. Uh, I, Stan Pro makes these particular ones, and I use a lot of Stan Pro equipment. It's available here in Canada. I'm not sure what you have in your area, but uh, these particular lights have done really, really well for me. They're really they're they're kick butt lights. The cool thing about these lights is, is of course they're all LED now, so they're super light. They don't get hot. 
which is great. But they're also interconnectable with these little patch cables that they come with. So you can connect a whole bunch of these together. And it's something ridiculous, like in the four inch flush mounts, um, you can put like 130 of them on one circuit. It's, it's ridiculous, the number. I mean, you wouldn't, I, I can't think of a scenario where you would ever do that. Uh, but if you do the math, of, uh, according to, you know, in terms of wattage and draw and all that stuff, what is legal uh, in our Canadian codes anyway, you can put like something like 130 of them. These ones, I'm not sure. I think that you can put like 15 of them on at the same time or something like that. You can interconnect 15 of them. But can you imagine running 114.2 to the end of one of these suckers and then putting 15 of them on in your shop? Like craziness, right? It's, it's the technology has come so far. So... These were previously installed in another uh, garage uh, of mine. And I don't know if I ever had these two. I've got three spares. I don't know if I've ever had them in this garage because uh, I've redone the lighting in here a couple of times. But we really need light in this back area. I'm going to put two up. I'm going to put them side by side. I'm going to light that up just like a Christmas tree. It's going to be beautiful. So a couple of first orders of business here. I'm going to tidy up the cabling that was in here because I can see that they were individually patched at one point in time or another. Uh, so I'm going to do that and then, uh, and then I'm going to put them up and see how it goes. So join me. Let's do this together. It's going to be fun. Still haven't found that 14-2 wire. Okay, that was relatively painless. Uh, it took about half an hour uh, to put up the uh, one, two, three, three lights, uh, tapped it into the existing circuit. Uh, so now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven LED uh, lights here in the workshop. But I'm telling you, I can see everything clearly. Uh, it, 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 what a difference just those three fixtures made. Um, I can see the ballast box now. I have no problem sitting here welding um, and doing the, the different things that I want to do. The only uh, crutch is, is that when I open up the door, the lighting goes away. But the cool thing is, this door has two windows in it. And if I get it just right, I can have the door open and still have more light than what I had originally. That'd be only if I'm really doing quite a bit of welding that I'd have that door open. I could have the other door open as well. So I don't know. You know what? If for, for the size of shop that I've got right now, it's going to work great. I'm going to be able to uh, do everything that I want to do. So uh, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's start building on this thing. Let's find a place for the chainsaw. Shut this off here. Okay, so I had to grab the tractor because I wanted to make sure that the, the, the clearances were going to be okay, regardless of where I, I mounted this. I'm starting with the chainsaw because I think that, you know, I, I need to have a good place for it that, uh, you know, it's out of harm's way while turning in the woods and things like that. And what I was initially thinking was uh, placing the saw back here. And, and, and I like that okay, um, but... I don't like it. I, I, I like it, but I don't. I like it because, you know, it's kind of behind the tractor. It's between everything. And I just checked uh, the clearances up and down. It would be fine. Um, in fact, let me try that just one more time because I didn't have it this far out. So let's just see what it looks like here. <sighs> Saw's getting heavy today. Right, okay, I remember why I didn't like it. I remember now why I don't like it. Yeah, that's exactly why I don't like it. Okay, let me shut this tractor off and explain. I remember now why I don't like it. When it's mounted this way, 
And as the tractor is, is rolling and taking the bumps, the saw is really bouncing back and forth like this. Can you see that? And to me, it's putting a real stress on where the bar is mounted to the saw to the saw head. And I don't like that, especially like, you know, uh, when you're going over big bumps, you know, it, it's amazing how much a tractor flexes and how much the gear on it moves. And, um, you know, I don't want the saw doing that and jiggling all the time. If you mount it to the side here, you get the forward and backwards action, but there's no stress happening other than whatever side to side movement's happening. But you get what I'm saying in my mind. I'm thinking that it would it would be moving back and forth much more if it was on the other side. So that's why I didn't like it. I've kind of chosen this as a location to weld this down, weld this bracket. And then I'll have a bin right here uh, with chains. I'm going to seal this off. Uh, chains and all my rigging kind of in this little section here. Um, I'm going to mount my axe on this side, uh, a place for my axe and, and a couple other items. Uh, I want to be able to put a hammer on here. Like a hammer could go on the front. You know, we could use all four sides of it. Uh, it's just I don't want the saw there, I don't think. So I'm going to mount this uh, up right around here somewhere. I tried putting it on the other side, but on the other side, when you go to grab the saw, it's backwards, right? You'd have to come at the saw from this way. I'd rather pick it up. I don't drop it here. I'd rather pick it up like this and be gone with it, right? So I think this is where it's going to go. I'm going to um, get the grinder out and we're going to uh, grind this off, put a couple tack welds on and, and, and see, how, see how I feel about it. Let's start with that. I'm gonna get the tractor out of the way first. Let's, let's get the tractor out of the way. Okay, let's address something right off the bat. I am not a professional welder. Never have been, never will be. For all you hacks in the comments that are going to criticize, have at it. Uh, it's not gonna change anything. I'm still gonna weld this thing. They're gonna be Gorilla Welds, big, ugly, but they'll be strong and they'll hold. So don't panic, I'm not doing anything for you. Just doing it for me in my backyard. So try to keep it to a minimal, Hacks. And if you can't take it to a minimal, why don't you come here and do it all for me, for free. Let's get started. I saw you walking there. I had to stop and stare, but you didn't even look my way. Friends all told me no, but I knew I had to go with the one shot that I had with you. And I know that you don't hear me, but I'll say it.
So the best weld of the day, in my opinion, is this one right here. I'm always experimenting because I'm not um, a good welder, uh, but I'm always experimenting with, you know, whether or not I should be doing circles. I was doing circles here and it was like, meh, you know, uh, back and forth, um, pushing the bead and all that. I find for me, the best way to, to weld uh, at my experience level with the um, flux core welder that I have is side to side. And if I go side to side like this, do 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 do, it always seems to leave a nice weld. I kind of goofed up back here, and this is where the original tack was. But every time I touch the welder there, I, I learn a little something about what I should and shouldn't be doing. And you know, um, in my opinion, uh, that's on there. It's plenty strong. Um, it, I I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think I need to do any more welding other than that. So let's move on to a, a different section of the box here. Okay, here's the type of thing that happens when you leave me to my own devices. How many times have you been out in the field with your chainsaw and you want to sharpen it and you've got to balance it on the front of an ATV or on the ground or between your legs, uh, find a place to sit? Just annoying, right? I've got this little sacrificial vice um, that I'm thinking would probably weld up real nice to this box. Uh, so I'm going to, I don't know if I can even weld this. Is this cast? Like I, I don't know all the metals and how that all works, but I'm going to take this vice apart, bring the base down, um, and, and, and prepare to weld it right here in this position. How cool is it? This, this was on my bench, but I've got a bigger one for my bench. Um, and, and I don't mind sacrificing this one to the box at all, uh, because this is convenient. I mean, look, you can just grab the chain and sharpen away and you'd have something real strong and sturdy man that that's going to change my life out in the out in the woods uh for sure rather than trying to balance the saw somewhere and uh trying to make it happen so let's uh let's grind this down and see if it see if it'll weld to the box like i have no idea if it will so let's try it let's try it out and see what happens
I ask you folks, how cool is it to be able to sharpen your chainsaw in the field, just like this, with a well-fastened vise that you can clamp the saw into and have access to the chain. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing, folks, to be able to stand right here beside and run your file through. And once you're done with one side, to be able to walk this way and get on to your other side. How cool is that? Let me tell you how cool it is. Okay, so here we are. I've got the vise welded to the top of the box, and it's uh, actually one of these welds is probably the best weld I've ever done in my life. Uh, and then I've got the chainsaw holder. So both located pretty good. Now, in full disclosure, you'll notice I'm sitting right where the ATV was. <laughs> I've actually been filming a couple of episodes at the same time, uh, and it's it's really nothing more than just wake up and say, hey, what do I feel like working on today? Um, so the ATV in this particular episode is, is done and gone. Episode uh, six is, is, where, we, uh, is uh, where we finished all that. But you'll notice that, you know, in episode six, this thing's sitting in the background. And, uh, you know, I started it with the bike <laughs> in, the, in the hole. So anyway, that explains that. We're basically two weeks since the last frame that you just saw when I was welding this on. So about two weeks has gone by uh, since I welded this bad boy on. Now I haven't done anything else since then. And I'm at an impasse. I, I know that, you know, I love having the saw here and the vise here for sharp, sharpening the saw. I have a tool bag that's gonna hang off of the, uh, the, the end of the uh, box, which is really cool. Um, but I'd like to put an ax handle on here, maybe a handle for a shovel. Uh, I need a place for my chains and rigging. Um, and I'm not sure how that's all going to look yet. So I'm, I'm still messing around in my brain trying to figure out where, where everything should go. Here's what I do know, though. Uh, and I'm going to do this now. I, I do need to cut a piece of steel out and cover this hole because the amount of stuff I've lost down inside of here, and I've welded the door shut, um, washers and nuts and bolts and stuff. Um, I'm just saying that... Uh, I know that I need to get that done. So I'm going to do that right off the bat, weld that off and cap it off, uh, and that'll be good. And then from there, I got to kind of decide where the chains and everything are going to be stored. I want to make sure that I have full functionality of my vise, so I can't go past here. I can't put anything here because I, I like having the tabletop for the chainsaw to rest when the bar is in the vise. Some thought to be put into this, where I'm going to keep those chains and how I'm going to make this work. But uh, we're going to start here. We're going to start with this uh, top plate and uh, get a little piece of steel cut off and, and get it welded on there. And we'll go from there. Okay, so now, you know, I've got, I've got the top welded on and, and, and granted, 
I'm not a talented welder, obviously. Uh, but as far as I know, the object of welding is to join two pieces of metal together. Lo and behold, these two pieces of metal are now together. So, although I may not be an artist like some fabricators are in welding, uh, I do get the job done, and they look like okay welds. There's a couple of holes here. It's all in what you're doing, I think. It's all in what you're doing. I'm building a ballast box for a little tractor, so it's not, uh, yeah. I rest my case. Okay. Just flick this off for a second because it's making an awful lot of noise, that fan. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. Wouldn't it be cool if I took some of that flat steel there and cut it to size and just put it right here? And then this would be a place for the chains and everything inside here. It's kind of like one of those old toolboxes, you know, with the, with the metal uh, holder right in the middle of it. So... I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to take off this label here first, a sticker, and uh, and I think I'll put a piece of that steel right here, uh, and I'll and I'll just tack weld it so that there's gaps on the bottom. I'll do a good bead here uh, for drainage, just just in case you know it gets rained on or or whatever. Um, I think it's pretty much pitching down anyway, and uh, I think that I think it's going to work. So we'll see. Uh, first things first there, we'll grab a measurement, then we'll cut a piece of that and uh, try to do it as straight as we can in freehand. Jeez, this sticker's a nuisance, isn't it? Of course, it'll probably just burn off as soon as I start welding with it. Take my gloves off here before they melt. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Oh, Dickens, that's hot. Yeah, Johnny, go ahead, touch the thing that you just welded. Put your bare skin right on it. Good idea. Did I tell you to like and subscribe yet? Please like and subscribe.
to do something about that. I'm not sure yet what that's going to be, but we'll figure it out. Well, I'm pretty happy. When I started this ballast box, you know, it was an old safe, some type of a cash cart, a casino or something like that would have pushed around the floor, dropping deposits in it. It was heavy in its own right. But then we took a chimney out of the house and I had some uh, concrete and bags that really got a lot of humidity in it. So it was ruined. And so I, I stuffed it all in this and I think we're, we're, it's around 550, 550 pounds, I would say. I haven't weighed it yet, but I, I do want to do that just for fun. I got the tools loaded up in it because I got a big day today. It's early morning. Um, and I got, I got some plans. Thank you for taking your precious time to watch my videos. I'm overwhelmed with the response so far. Um, and we're just at the beginning, folks. We have bought a property here that has a lot of projects and we're excited not only on the land but in the house home renovation just the content that we're going to pump out well I, i'm really excited about it i i think it's going to be great so please take a second smash that like button for me it really does help via the youtube algorithm and subscribe so that you know when i'm uh, put that little bell notification on so that you know when i'm uploading new content like I said earlier in the video, I had a couple of weeks where I was away with a, with a music group, with a band. I was on tour with them. And so I was kind of, you know, t started the YouTube channel and then took two weeks off right away. But, you know, I was committed to doing that and, and uh, had a blast with those, with those guys. And it felt good to, uh, you know, post-COVID get out and do some shows. But now it's back to homesteading, which we are just at the beginning of. And we're excited about it. Mrs. A was working on the gardens yesterday um, and getting things put to bed. Also planting her garlic and, and some bulbs, some other things. Are, we've got some footage on that that we'll be sharing. But this is exciting. I'm glad to have this done. I think I'm going to order a couple of John Deere stickers on Amazon. If you've got any suggestions of the stickers I should put, put in the comments if you know some. Some good stickers. That's enough rambling for me. i got to go. I gotta get into the woods and cut out the new trail that I'm working on. I might even grab some footage of that. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm pretty happy with that. Have a wonderful day, folks. Take care of one another. See you on the next video.